Oh, God, that's better. Shaved and showered. Um, I expect to be dead, of course, by Sunday night, after the information I put out this morning on the channel. Explaining that in cases like mine, um, which was alleged, well, oh, malicious communication, that's right, because they're protecting their, police are protecting their bailiff mates and letting them break any law they want. Um, and I don't think we can mention this too much, Inspector Paul Rogerson, who said that no member of Huntingdonshire District Council would be investigated for any complaint ever by the police and no court official would be investigated for any sort of impropriety of monies or cash, which is basically all the courts do. So, yes, protecting their bent bill of mates because they're above the law. I don't know what Stephen Seagal would think of that. He did a film called Above the Law once. If you don't know who Stephen Seagal is, Google him. He's all over the fucking internet. So basically, right, I did a YouTube video because a bailiff had threatened me with arrest for non-payment of council tax under the uh, Domestic Violence Act. So I did a video saying that if he'd come round here and took, took my staff, breaking the law, obviously, because I now don't believe they have any powers of forced entry or arrest whatsoever, with the one exception of they're at a house and they believe someone's life is genuinely in danger. And to be quite honest, if, if my life was genuinely in danger because of someone else in this house, I'd quite happily have someone kick the door in. That's that's fair enough. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, so I did a YouTube video saying I'd go after him and kill him. Which apparently is a bit naughty. Um, even though he's already broken the law. Police don't seem to be paying any attention to that part. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen that one come up for a while actually, I don't know if it's still there. But, despite the fact they all know they're breaking the law, and again going back to the information I revealed this morning, uh, Mr. Bailiff then went, wah, 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 cry more, wah, oh, nasty man said nasty things about me, wah. <laughs> I'm a big tough bailiff. Ah. I don't know how that's going to come out on camera. <laughs> Seriously, guys, did you not read the contract when you signed up to be a bailiff? <laughs> did you? This is the utter ridiculousness of this situation. Ah, so you want to be a bailiff, Mr. Smith. Okay, then. Right, you're going to have to go into people's houses, uh, despite them not wishing you in there, and you're going to have to take all their money and possessions, uh, despite them disputing the debt which you say you're there to collect. I'm sure they'll all be very nice to you. Seriously. I watched, I don't know if any of you watched that... Um, uh, what's it called? DCBL. Um, Can't pay, we'll take it away on Channel 5. And I watched some of that last weekend. It was quite entertaining. Not only did we see a high uh, high court bailiff with an alleged uh, you know, writ of entry and all this sort of thing. And he was holding the drill sideways on the door so it rattled against the lock. So it appeared from inside as if he was drilling the lock. So again, no, no powers of forced entry, I don't think. Um, but also there was like one of the guys I was working for, he must have been about 200 pounds. He must have been over six foot tall. So at least 200 pounds. And he was in this house with this woman who must have weighed bloody 100 pounds soaking wet and was about four foot seven. And she touched his arm. She, I think it was part of her sort of remonstration. And she just went, look, you know, and touched his arm. And he was like, whoa, whoa. I'm a big tough bailiff and a woman half my size has just touched my arm. Whoa! Call the police! Call the police! I mean, they really are fucking pathetic. Uh, 
and then they come out in court with them. Um, everyone deserves the right to be able to go to work without thinking they're going to get hurt. What the fuck. Jesus Christ, I've had more near-death fucking experiences on the road. Last year, my front steering tyre blew out at 56 miles an hour on the A14. If I thought I was never going to get hurt at work, I'd never... Sorry, if I thought I was going to get hurt at work, I'd never get out of fucking bed. Christ sake, I had my windscreen blown out in fucking Belfast when I was in the army. One of our guys in Bosnia crashed off the road and ended up in a minefield. They'll just be like, don't touch me. Don't, no, you can't raise your voice. Oh, that's aggressive behaviour. You've raised your voice. I'm calling the police. Oh no, you've creased my sleeve. Oh, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, Cambridge Police have sussed you out, game's up, you're unlawfully getting people into court by deception, smoke and mirrors. If you go down the station, when you go, well, when, if you go down the station, you make that statement, you think you're making it to help yourself. No, they just need the statement. As soon as they've got the statement, you're guilty. That's what it's for. Okay, yes, they may twist your words in court and yada, yada, yada. But you've been found guilty as soon as you make that fucking statement. And not only that, we know you won't, will not investigate council employees <laughs> or court people for any reason whatsoever. Ever. I'd say you're just about done, guys. So, you know, either step up your game or, or well, just step up your game, really, because you, you you've all been caught now. The entirety of Cambridge Police Force is guilty of misconduct in a public office for willfully refusing to investigate councils and courts, no matter what the incidents. Can't say fairer than that. See you later.